Hey guys, so a lot of you guys have been asking me a lot of great questions over the past couple of years about my setup. You guys have been asking questions about what drums do I play, what sticks do I use, what cymbals do you play, what are those electronics on your sides, and it's just a lot of great questions that I wanted to just take a little bit of time today to kind of just go over my setup, why I play what I play, and just some of the stuff that you see in a few of my videos. So it's gonna be exciting, let's get started. So to start off, I think one of the most important parts of the kit is the drum throne. So I use a DW3000 drum throne, and I absolutely love it. It's a DW3100 specifically, and honestly, I think it's so important to just have a solid bass before you start playing, because if you're not comfortable, you're gonna be super, super agitated as you're playing. You're not gonna be able to be the best version of you as a drummer. In terms of drums, I play a DW Performance Series kit in Ebony Stain. And so right off the bat, the first thing you see when you sit down is your snare. And so I play a 14 by six and a half inch maple snare that comes stock with the kit. I used to use that for quite some time up until I switched over to a 14 by eight Ludwig Black Beauty. And this is my go-to snare for everything. I travel with it every single week. I play on it every day as much as I can, um, but I absolutely love the snare. It has the perfect balance of crack and just fatness to it. And it's absolutely beautiful. You can use it for so many different settings. In terms of the kit, I use a 12 by nine rack tom, a 14 by 12 floor tom, and a 16 by 14 floor tom as well. I also do have a 10 by eight rack tom that I use depending on the type of music that I'm playing or recording. Um, but for the most part, that's my basic setup. I also have a 22 by 18 inch kick drum. Again, this is a fully maple kit. That's what I love about the kit in itself. It's just very controlled tone and you can kind of tune it to what you want and um, get some really reliable tone out of it. In terms of heads, I use a mix between Remo and Evan's head. Starting off with the snare, I tend to use a mix of snare heads. So right now on my Ludwig Black Beauty, I use an Evan's heavyweight snare head um, and just a hazy 300 on the bottom or sometimes it's even the stock head on the bottom. A lot of times, other than that, I'll use a Remo controlled sound head or even sometimes Emperor's or Emperor X's, depending on the type of music that I'm playing. I tend to switch it out uh, based on that. In terms of toms, I use all coated Emperor's on my toms um, and clear ambassadors on the bottoms. And the reason why I do this is because it just gives a nice balance between the coated head on the top and the clear on the bottom for my personal preference. In terms of kick, I use the Evans EMAD 2 on the batter side. And the reason I love this is because it comes with this muffling ring around it. And right out of the box, it just sounds so, so good. It just gives your kick this really nice punchy tone. And currently on the Rezo head of my kick, I use a stock DW Rezo head that came with the kit. And what I love about it, it, it comes with six portholes already on the side, but I actually was able to cut a four inch porthole myself and kind of reinforce it so that I can do some internal miking as well. In terms of symbols, I use all Mino Byzance. And I absolutely love this series of symbols. Mino did absolutely incredible. And the more they come out with symbols, I get super excited. They just came out with a new series. You should definitely go check it out. But going from left to right on the kit, let's talk about the symbols. So on the left hand side, I use a 16 inch Mino Byzance Trash Crash. This symbol is just fun. You look at it, it's just like, what is this? But there's a bunch of holes in a symbol. Should this be this way? But it's a lot of fun. I could use it for a lot of pop songs, a lot of R&B, hip hop stuff. And this kind of creates a little bit of flair to the music that you're playing. Um, so I love using that, that crash. I'm kind of sticking with the crashes here. This is my favorite symbol on this kit. Um, it's an extra thin hammered 20 inch uh, crash. And it straight up sounds beautiful. It kind of, you play it, it crashes in beautifully and it kind of like very courteously sees its way out no matter what you're playing and it's so so nice I love it um, it's my favorite crash on this and it's actually the symbol that caused me to switch over to my Byzance overall so if you get a chance to play this or just check it out I highly recommend it on my right hand side I use a 22 inch vintage crash um, and this guy's just a big like beefy crash but the cool thing about this is it doesn't stay in too long it kind of has a short decay it has a short sustain so it doesn't stay in the mix too long but it's nice for you to kind of crash on and kind of play with here and there and on the right of that I have a 20 inch just a smaller version of the same crash it's a vintage crash as well this crash you'll kind of see on different positions in my kit um, I tend to take that and move it around depending on where I want it um, and it kind of just gives me a little bit more flex um, in terms of where I want to hit some crashes 
boxes and stuff. In terms of hats, I use 16 inch extra dry medium thin hats. Now, when I first got these hats, I thought, okay, these might seem a little bit too dry, but when I started playing them a little bit more, I started to realize that the hats start to grow with you as you're playing them a lot more. So it kind of has this perfect chink to it um, to kind of play different genres of music. But then when you want to kind of lay into them, they really cut through and just make this beautiful, beautiful tone. And they're not harsh, they're not overbearing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so I love it. The bottom hat tends to be a little heavier than the top, which is something that I really like. And I think it gives it that, uh, the tone that comes out of it when you're kind of trashing on them. And um, it just sounds absolutely incredible. Uh, in terms of ride, I use two different rides. So for the most part, my main ride is a Mino Byzance medium traditional ride. And this is a 24 inch, this is a heavy duty. This guy does not play. I love it because it has a very strong bell to it, but it also has a very thick presence. So if I'm ever, um, you know, crashing on the ride or just kind of just playing some light grooves on them, it's, it cuts through, pierces very, very nicely. It's not too bright, it's not too dark, but it has a very nice subtle balance to it and I really like that. Whenever I'm doing something more jazz related or just more kind of lighter grooves, I switch over to a 24 inch, Big Apple Dark Ride. And this symbol is exactly what its title says it is. It's a big, dark ride. It's just absolutely beautiful. It has very, it's, it's a lot lighter and it's a lot thinner. And so it kind of gives you more of a darker tone and it cuts out a lot quicker. So if you ever get this ride, don't expect for this thing to stay in the mix too long. Once you crash it, it does decay out a lot quicker. But for a lot of the songs that I, I, I do play or a lot of the music that I play, I love, love using this. Now, when you got big symbols like 20 inch crashes, 22 inch crashes, 24 inch rides, you wanna make sure that you got some solid hardware to hold that stuff up. And so I use a, a good mix of double brace, heavy strength hardware. And if I can recommend anything, DW makes a lot of solid quality hardware um, that I can definitely highly recommend from their lowest end to even their more expensive line. You can't go wrong with anything that you get. So for my hi-hats, I use a two-legged DW3000 hi-hat stand. Uh, having two legs kind of makes it a lot easier to incorporate a double pedal. And so in terms of double pedal, I use a DW9000 double pedal. And one thing I love about this is it is so, so smooth. It just makes it a lot of fun to play and kind of tastefully throw into the mix whenever you want to use it. Uh, but it makes a lot of room when you have hardware that kind of incorporates other pieces on your kit. It's not just standalone. In terms of holding up my toms, all of them use, the floor toms are definitely held up by legs. None of them are rack mounted except for my rack tom. That guy is rack mounted to my cymbal stand. People tend to complain about, hey, when you're recording, is there a vibration bleed or anything like that? Yeah, there is, but I tend to like that. I don't mind it too much. In terms of snare stands, uh, again, we're going back to the double brace heavy strength snare stands and I use snare stands for a bunch of different things whether it's holding up my snares my auxiliary snares sometimes holding up a rack tom or even holding up my SPD so I use a Roland SPD SX um, heavily in my sets and and whether I'm recording or playing live I love this machine and it helps me use triggers on my kit whether it's my kick or snare or the toms or even helps me put miscellaneous pads around the kit so that I can kind of create more of an acoustic hybrid setup and so I use a snare stand to kind of hold that up or sometimes I use the APC mount that it comes with and just mount that onto a cymbal stand that I'm not using at the moment in terms of sticks and percussion. So around the kit, you might see shakers and you might see a few tambourines. I use a, a mix between mino and LP percussion tambourines and shakers. And uh, depending on what I use, I kind of like to have variety of, of these pieces. So sometimes you'll see me with uh, a mini tambourine on my hi-hat stand. Sometimes you'll see a tambourine rack mounted on my right-hand side to kind of just give a little bit more flavor to whatever I'm playing. Um, and then oftentimes you'll see uh, a bunch of different shakers on my left-hand side. And I like to have these pretty accessible to me so that when I'm playing, it's easy for me to put one down, grab a pair of sticks and kind of switch off as well. In terms of sticks, I use Promark 5B Naturals. And I used to use 5As, but when I got a hold of the 5Bs, uh, I realized that they had a lot more give to it. They were a lot ro more robust. And they, you know, I just felt like they weren't gonna break as I was going in playing harder than them. I can go pretty heavy, go pretty ham, and it just wouldn't break on me. And so I really, really love those sticks. I have a solid grip on them, and that's something that's super important when you're picking out sticks. Making sure that you like the length, you like the taper, you like the tip finish, and you can also have a good grip on them. These are the tools that you're using to play. I've been using these for the past two years, and I absolutely love them. They don't break on me too often you know they, they definitely tend to last even when they're pretty chipped down so uh, those are sticks that I use in terms of my stick bag I tend to have a few pair of miscellaneous uh, sticks in there as well that kind of help me in terms of other forms of playing so I, I like to keep a pair of mallets in there for kind of doing some wash stuff on the cymbals I like to keep a pair of brushes in there both plastic and um, more the more the metal tips 
uh, normal standard brushes. And I also like to keep a pair of hot rods or thunder rods in there. I also like to keep a pair of practice sticks in there and I use court master sticks for practice. Um, and the reason I use court master sticks is because they're a little bit heavier than my standard sticks that I use to play live or recording. And so that kind of works out my forearms and my wrists a little bit more and so gets them ready, gets my muscles ready so that when I'm using my 5Bs or whatever sticks I'm using that day, um, I'll be ready to kind of go and it, my, my arms and my muscles will feel comfortable to play. And so that's why I use those. So I typically tend to take those out maybe 15 to 30 minutes before I'm about to play a set or play in a session and kind of just do my warm-ups with those and they feel absolutely great. I highly recommend those. In terms of my stick bag itself, I use a mono stick bag. I've had a bunch of stick bags in the past, but nothing really compares to this one. This is one thing I like about it. It's compact, it's uh, waterproof, uh, but it also has a compartment for my metronome, compartments for my drum keys, for my hi-hat clutches, uh, things like that. And so it, it just, it really gives me a very like easy way to kind of transport my essentials. I can hold moon gels in there, adapters, mini quarter inches if I ever need it. And it also is very easy to mount onto your floor tom or your snare. So if you want to draw sticks out, wherever you need it, it's really cool to have your stick back handy as opposed to lying on the ground someplace near you. Speaking of metronomes, I use a Boss DB90 metronome, and you may hear that this is like your industry standard for metronomes, but there's a lot of great ones out there, the Tama Rhythm Watch, a few bunch of iPad and iPhone and whatever mobile device you're using, they have a bunch of apps that you can use as well. But I really love the Boss DB90 for the sake of its several ports that it you know allows you to use. You could, you could use an eighth inch jack, a quarter inch jack. You can also use uh, foot pedals if you want to start and stop the metronome, if you want to switch to the next BPM that you have in the set list. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can use. You can even use it as, it's, as your own in-ear monitor. Um, you can put your in-ear mix straight into that thing and listen out of that guy. And so there's so many different um, uses for this metronome and I absolutely love that you could rack mount it to your kit so it kind of stays clean with the setup. You're not worrying about it sitting on a table or anything like that. Um, but it's a really versatile metronome and I highly recommend it even for practice use. Um, it even lets you go from um, singles, doubles, triplets and in, even into 16th notes in terms of how you hear the click with the different voices. There's so much more, you can check it out in the description below, I'll put more details on that, but definitely one of my favorite metronomes. I've had mine for over 12 years now and it's lasted me forever and it's absolutely incredible. So um, if you're looking for a solid metronome, I'd highly, highly recommend that. So as I said, this is pretty much the setup that I'm using currently right now. There's a few other drums, a few other cymbals, a few other pieces of hardware that I use from time to time, whether it's percussion, whether it's sticks, whether it's cymbals, snares, whatever it is, that I kind of keep stashed away. But I, I take them out and I use them as I need it, depending on the session that I'm using. So again, this is my setup and this is what I use. This is uh, something that's taken me years over, or over the past 15 to 20 years to kind of accumulate and build up to getting um, and putting together and experimenting with a lot. So if you're just starting out on drums, listen, don't focus too much on brands, focus definitely on tone and your skill level and, and, and growing that. That's pretty much my full setup, guys. Links and details to everything that was talked about in this video are gonna be in the description below. And as always, if I haven't answered anything in this video that you might be still wondering about, feel free to comment, feel free to message me, um, and I'll do my best to reach out and answer whatever I can. Follow me on Instagram at Johnson George Drums or like my Facebook page at Johnson George Drums as well so that you never miss an update on new videos and new projects coming up. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.